We all know that our population is aging and seniors can get priced out of their homes. But is relief in sight? John Arthur Wilson, tax assessor, is with us today. Hi, John. Hey, Stan. So, I mean, is that right? I mean, is, is that just, uh, you know, some kind of uh, wisdom that people think that they have? Or can seniors actually get priced out of their homes? No, we're actually seeing cases where seniors are getting taxed out of their homes. And that's one of the things that really alarms me right now. Um, I've talked to several folks. In fact, I was just talking to somebody today, uh, an older couple. He's, he's suffering from dementia, and she has to stay home to support him. And they said, you know, our income's been cut by two-thirds, uh, but our property taxes keep going up. And I said, you know, we have a program, a senior exemption program that might help, and that's what we're trying to get out to more and more people is that there is help for you. If you're 61 years of age, the owner-occupant of the house, and you have an annual income, household income of less than $40,000, we want you to contact us so we can try to help. It's part of the, the aging you know, generation that we're seeing more and more seniors uh, are finding themselves where they may well have paid off their property tax, or rather paid off their mortgage, but the property tax is the thing that is starting to become daunting to them. And we have to do something about that. When I think of the assessor's office, though, I don't, I don't think of you doing any, anything. Excuse me, but I don't think of you doing oh, anything other than, you know, checking to see the value of houses and making sure that the value is appropriately done, and that's basically it. But you have a larger scope, it seems. I think if you look at really what the core function of the assessor's office is, it, it's to provide values on residential and commercial properties that create a stable revenue stream for schools, local governments, the state, and, and that. And part of you get that by making sure that you don't have wild swings in real estate values. I mean, we paid a terrible price when the real estate bubble burst, and we were on the one hand, frankly, a little late in lowering values, which meant people ended up paying more. And then when values plunged, we ended up with the chaos that that created for local governments, where suddenly they were scrambling to figure out how to make ends meet. Does this require, though, that your office has to be more in contact with, with legislators and, and others who have taxing authority uh, to just kind of tell them the way it is? You know, guys, you're going to have to give some relief to property tax owners? Well, that, that's a discussion I intend to have over these next four years is I, I want to start talking to local governments. You know, we have 161 taxing districts in King County. Um, they're all there for, for understandable, noble purposes. But we need to have a better sense of how all of those pieces fit together and what that actually means to homeowners. You know, we've reached a point where we kind of created a revenue Christmas tree. Uh, and we have a lot of the big base ornaments that are all around the tree now. But now we're hanging larger and larger ornaments higher and higher up the tree. And what I worry about is eventually that tree is going to just fall right over. Mm -hmm. Anyway, John Arthur Wilson, I, you have a, a background of communications, you have a background of news, you have a background in government, and so, but isn't this the first time you've been an elected? Th this is indeed the first time I've been an elected official. I, and, and, and do I say congratulations? I, I think so. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see a little while from here, but no, you know, it, it, it was kind of an odd experience for me the first time I went into the assessor's office after the first of the year, and not only did it say King County Assessor, but then it had my name up there, and I went, hmm, I guess this is real. But, uh, you know, I, I decided at this point in my career that uh, enough about talking on the sidelines how things could be better and about issues that needed to be discussed, I thought it was time, if I felt that way, I need to step up and do that. Hmm. Let's go to our, our prime discussion point, though, today, which is primarily giving seniors or enabling seniors to know what benefits that they have. Um, first off, just kind of generally tell us what benefits do seniors have? You, you already talked about it, $40,000 in income or less, 61 or older, and it's an owner occupancy. Uh, and is there, are, is there a lot of seniors in King County that could benefit from this? Yeah, we think so. Um, we're working on some estimates that we've pulled from the census data. Uh, right now, the county only has about 18,000 people total registered uh, for the senior exemption program. And we're a county of 2 million plus people, mm -hmm. so it's a relatively small percentage. We think there is easily double that number that could be eligible and perhaps even more. So part of what we want to do this year is really mount an aggressive outreach effort to get out to people. Because we think in a lot of cases, people just don't know about the program. Uh, in other cases, there's some cultural resistance. You know, there, there are certain uh, ethnic communities that don't like to talk about income. 
and that and the way the law is, we do have to have you talk to us about your income. If you get more and more people benefiting from it, doesn't that lower your overall tax receipts? And so there's going to be more pressure on uh, on government officials to come to you and say, you know, hey, we're going to have to increase taxes on everybody? Well, w the way it actually works is it is what's called a tax shift. So that while seniors would, the seniors eligible for the program would pay less, it's kind of like the scales of justice, it gets balanced out. If, if they're paying less, then we all as a general community and part of the common good are paying a little bit more. But it's really a rather modest amount. It's a few, few dollars a year. Mm -hmm. What specifically? Let's let's just say that I'm one of those. Let's say I'm 61 or older. I'm owner occupancy. Uh, I uh, have a stable income of $36,000 a year. Uh, my my home is valued at $500,000. Uh, I bought it for uh, $75,000 40 years ago. Uh, is that kind of stereotypical? Yeah, that that, that would be a, a, a not at all unusual profile. So and what's what's in it for me? So in in that case, yes, you would qualify. Um, and, and what it probably would mean to you is a reduction in your property taxes of several hundred dollars a year. Um, while you still get charged for basic schools and, and that, um, and you get levy lid lifts. So like in Seattle, for example, people would find that they would still be paying for the transportation levy that passed last fall and the Metropolitan Parks District. But in other cases, you'd be relieved of that, and it helps give you some tax. Does the assessor's office go give relief in a different way by, uh, by going into a house and saying, this house hasn't been updated since the 1970s, and as a result, its value is really not $750,000. Its value is more like $450,000. Is that the kind of thing that you do as well? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do that from time to time. You, you, you'll, you'll see cases where um, either, for example, the, the, the house is in worse condition than we thought it was. Uh, another one, especially here in the, in, the, in the Northwest, that's not all that uncommon, is we'll have like a property originally marked as a view property, but you'll find out that the neighbor's trees have grown so rapidly that the view disappeared behind a bunch of deciduous trees and that. So, you know, we, we, we ask people to come out and if, if you think we're off, please let us know and we'll come out and take mm -hmm. a look at it. And while this particular problem is, seems to be geared towards seniors and the solutions are geared towards seniors, there are other issues with property taxes around the county that you're looking at as well. Right. Well, I, I think, you know, both for, for low-income seniors, but, but I think for just seniors in general who, who are on relatively fixed incomes these mm -hmm. days, you look at Social Security had a zero COLA this year, um, and, and also working-class families. I, I think it's becoming more and more difficult for a family of four or five to be able to both first afford a home and then stay in that home and, and pay the property taxes on it. And so, you know, we need to start talking about, okay, what makes sense? What's a reasonable ask of us of, of how we use the property tax? And how much do we honestly think we can ask people to go to the well and, and put on their property as a tax lawyer? Of course, your office is not the one that sets the property tax. That comes to you from others. Correct. So, so we, we're, we're, we're sort of the messenger, so please don't kill the messenger. <laughs> um, but, but we end up taking um, the budgets that various institutions, schools, uh, fire districts, local governments send us, and then based upon the value, we do set your value, but we then calculate what's the levy rate going to need to be to get your, your agency or, or your, that government that serves you the money that it needs to, to perform its functions. Mm -hmm. I know you haven't been in office super long, uh, but what's the biggest complaint that the public has right now with regard to anything coming out of the assessor's office? Well, I, I think there's still a lot of questions that the public has about why do my property taxes keep going up and, and, and is there anything I can do about it? And part of that is an ongoing effort on education that we need to provide the public with a better understanding of how property taxes work, how, how it relates to what they vote for, and then also what routes they have to appeal those values or find other relief through some of the exemption programs that we have. In Seattle, we're really generous with regard to the payment of our taxes. Um, you know, right or wrong, we are, are very happy to tax ourselves if we think that it's going to do something better for us, uh, largely with regard to schools. Um, is there a point, though, especially in Seattle as opposed to just King County, is there a point where it's going to be really too much? 
I don't know, but it's something I very much worry about. I, I just, <clears throat> in Seattle this year, for example, while countywide property taxes are going up 9.35% um, in the city of Seattle for the average typical home, which is at a value of about $480,000, property taxes are set to go up 15%. Wow. I, I've just got to say, uh, a 15% annual property tax increase in Seattle isn't sustainable. We just can't go on that way. What do we do? Well, I, I think first and foremost is we need to start a community conversation with, with some of the people that watch your program, some of the people that we all know out in the community across a broad spectrum, and not frankly just in Seattle, but across the entire county, mm -hmm. about where are we going? What's the appropriate use for the property tax? Um, are, are there other ways we can modernize our tax system? Um, you, you know, we're, we're living with a tax system that was largely built when Washington State was largely an agrarian resource-based economy. We're not that anymore. Mm -hmm. And yet our tax base, is, our tax system, has not changed to meet the emerging realities of our economy. Other cities, other counties across the United States have faced this. What have they done? Well, sometimes they've, they, they've gone to lo highly localized taxes, for example, a head tax. Um, uh, some, some cities go to a municipal income tax. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not allowed here in Washington State. Uh, some look at um, other forms of taxation that they can utilize. I, I think, you know, we, we want to do a sort of survey across the nation of what's done, what works, what are the ramifications of that. You know, what we don't want to do is, is rush ahead with something that has an unintended consequence that could just be far more damning than what we already have now. Yeah. You have some success stories, though, with this, with this program, though. This is not a new program. No, it's, it's been around for a while, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I've seen and I've heard firsthand from seniors that, that have applied for it, and it's made a difference, that they've been able to save money uh, and stay in their home and that. You know, what, what we often find is, is we've got people that, you know, they bought their home in the 60s or 70s, paid off the mortgage, and now the property tax has become the, the largest single monthly expense they have. So if we can give them some relief on that, it can make a huge difference. So what's the process? If I were in that cir circumstance, or I thought I might be, what's the process? You, you can call up the assessor's office at 296-3920. We'll be sure to get that up on the screen. And, and, or, or you can drop by. We're on the seventh floor of the King County Administration Building. That's the Diamond Window Building. Um, and uh, we'll walk you through. It, it, it's relatively simple, but we do need to have your, your, your latest W uh, twos or your, your 1040 form so that we can verify what is, what is your income. Uh, once we verify that, we, we put through the, the, the other various paperwork with other county agencies to roll back your taxes and then it's reset. Mm -hmm. So when I ask about success stories, I always have to ask what's not yet a success story. And, and is it primarily what you're doing right now? Is that more, more people need to know about this so that they can apply and give you more work at the office? <laughs> well. That is part of it, Stan, is, is the, you know, I, I've told the staff already, um, I talked about this when I ran for office last year, I, I was frankly sh shocked a little bit that, that after I got elected and they were briefing me f further on the program, that the enrollment levels have actually declined each of the last four years. Now, you know, some of that's the reality that in a senior exemption program, naturally you're going to have some people who pass away and are no longer on the program. But Part of it is, as I've traveled around the county already, I'm stunned by the number of people who have no idea about the program. So um, we've started to reach out to community organizations, uh, to the AARP, uh, churches, you, you name it, um, and we're interested, people have suggestions of, of who we think we should talk to. But to tell the story, we've talked to, started to talk to municipalities about how, where, if they're offering like a, a low income relief program on utility bills or something mm -hmm. like that, let's figure out how we can work together and also notify people of that. Well, it seems to be that uh, Puget Sound Energy and City Light, there are two agencies that are in direct contact monthly with everybody. 
um, that they would be uh, an, uh, two entities that you could work with. Yeah, yeah, and, and we, we've been reaching out to them. The, 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 the only bit of a challenge there is obviously they're also serving a, a large renter population that mm. isn't eligible for the senior exemption. But we can sort that out. That's easy enough. The, 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 the challenge right now is just getting out to these people and letting them know there's help and, and don't, don't be in total despair. Um, is this just for those who are owner occupants, single family homes, or is it, you know, if somebody had a duplex and they were renting out the other side, does that uh, work too? It, it, it depend upon what the income was from the duplex. Um, it, 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 it's, it's restricted though as far as the household income and that. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if they were renting out the duplex, and the total income from that was less than forty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, that you. Okay. Um, something else that we're seeing, uh, and I don't know if it's just on Home and Garden TV or if it's just something that's going around the nation, but there's a, a more of a use of your own property, whether it's tiny houses or whether it's it's mother-in-laws or whatever. And I know that discussion is being is being had legislatively. How does that impact what you would do from the assessor's office? Well, it, it, it raises questions about how we value properties and, and, and that. Um, how do you place a value on a, uh, on a tiny home? Um, you know, uh, property values are not based upon your square footage, so, but, but it's based upon certain amenities. Um, you know, part of what we're seeing, and the tiny home movement is a reflection of this, is, is the, the whole kind of model of housing is starting to change and things that didn't exist or we didn't think were possible 10 years ago, certainly 20 years ago, now are starting to come into play. So that's one of the challenges we're gonna have over these next few years is how do we make sure that we are capturing when tiny houses come in, because you know, in a lot of cases, they may l require little or uh, minimal permitting in terms of if you have it pre-built and just drop it on the site. Um, there's a chance we could even miss that it exists, but we want to make sure we capture those. Now, you um, met with legislators recently talking about some things, uh, you know, obviously with regard to property tax issues. Uh, are, are you pursuing a bill to give relief in general to public? Yeah, well, well, one of the things we, we're, we're working on, and, and another thing that I talked about when I was running for office, is what we call an affordable housing tax exemption. So that, for example, whether you're an apartment owner of an older building, um, or a homeowner that has that vacant mother-in-law or ADU unit, that if you're willing to offer it at a, a below market rate, and we, we define that as up to 80% of the AMI, the average mean income, mm -hmm. um, we would give you a property break uh, for that square footage that's dedicated to affordable housing. We're doing that be, in part because we, we do have an affordability crisis in the county. Uh, I've, I've felt that very firsthand from our two daughters have both moved back home within the last year, year and a half, uh, because of the price of rental housing. Uh, by the same token, we have a lot of seniors who might not qualify for the senior exemption program, but they've got that you know b basement that they finished and the kids have moved out, and y you go, look, if, if you'll work with us, let's give you a little financial help. Um, we've gotten generally a pretty positive response from the legislature. It's always hard, especially in a short session, uh, that's in an election year to tell whether they're going to be able to move ahead on that mm -hmm. or whether we're going to find ourselves having to come back next year. So what was the reception to the affordable housing bill that you were talking about? Uh, generally pretty positive. I, I mean, I think there's some concerns. Um, you, you know, frankly, in rural parts of the state uh, where affo housing affordability isn't much of a crisis, uh, w we designed the bill specifically so it was a local option. Uh, we tried to assure them we didn't want to come in and impose ourselves for an affordable housing solution where there wasn't an issue. There, there's some other issues with legislators where we've had to assure them, first and foremost, this wasn't going to affect uh, funding for McCleary uh, one way or another. It didn't take any money out of the system. Mm -hmm. Didn't bring any new money in, though, too. Um, we uh, talked a little bit about, uh, we had some legislators concerned, were we trying to deal with zoning? No, what we wanted to do is give localities the maximum discretion to figure out how widespread in your community did you want to use this? Did you want to do it citywide? Did you want to do just this part of the city or, or that? But generally pretty positive uh, with both Republicans and Democrats. I can imagine a scenario though where you've got legislators and, and city council members and mayors who are, uh, you know, here in King County who are coming to you and saying, you know, I need more tax revenue. You've got taxpayers who are saying, 
I, you know, I can't afford anymore. You know, government is, is creeping into my life way too much, and, and you're doing it with taxation. I see this big convergence zone happening, and you're in the middle. What do you do? You know, I, I've always viewed that the assessor's office has two customers, if you will. Uh, first and foremost is the taxpayer, and, and the second uh, is the taxing districts. And what we need to do is have our customers talk to one another about um, mutual expectations and, and what's realistic. Uh, what's realistic from the taxpayer standpoint of what can they afford to pay, what are they willing to pay, and from the, from the taxing district, what's realistic to ask taxpayers to pay for, and where do you have to look at the need to modernize or somehow change your tax system? It, it seems to be, though, a bit of an expansion of roles of the tax assessor's office. I mean, I thought that you just kind of like uh, set property values. I don't think that the assessor can just stand back and kind of let it happen. You know, I, I, I was chief deputy during the depth of the housing recession, and I saw the terrible plight it paid um, for, for both homeowners that struggled to even be able to avoid foreclosure and keep in their home versus also taxing districts that were struggling with going, how am I going to provide fire protection? How am I going to provide for, for schools, for parks, for uh, essential services? Um, we can't afford to go through that again, and we've got to demonstrate that we're smarter and we're going to finally be proactive. I think it would be remiss of the King County Assessor not to be trying to start a discussion on what makes sense and how do we reach some kind of sustainable economic model for property taxes. Sustainability is, is a really big word here, and we talked about the sustainability of a 15% tax increase uh, here in the city of Seattle. I mean, what do you say to a a uh, city official who comes to you and says, you know, look, we've got tons of new uh, employees coming in for Amazon who are, are buying houses and they're spending a lot of money here. They can afford this. But not everybody works for Amazon. Um, and, and, you know, one of the things I worry about, and, and you see some cities uh, up and down the West Coast here that are examples where they didn't deal with the affordability thing. Obviously, first and foremost is San Francisco. That, that has become a city that, while I love San Francisco, it is a city of the very rich and the very poor. Uh, if you go just a few miles on a border to the north of us, you see Vancouver, BC, that has also sort of missed the affordability boat. And they're now struggling. And you, you hear stories coming out of there of both seniors that are having to move out of the lower mainland because they can't afford to live there, of businesses that once had thriving street-level businesses along, say, Robson Street. I was reading an article the other day about this. And they've had to close up because commercial rents have gone up so much that they can't afford to keep that little local business. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried that we need to hold a middle together, a middle of both the middle class and of, of middle class vendors and, and that. And we can't allow us to become a city of just the ultra-rich or the ultra-tech. Is that your job? As long as people keep voting for me, and it will be. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, I just think if, if you look around, I, I spent a lot of time as I thought about running for this office, and, and no one was talking about these critical housing-related issues. Mm -hmm. and, and I view that the assessor very much does relate to housing. Um, you know, what, what we're trying to first and foremost do is make sure we provide a fair and equitable value on every piece of property. Um, but part of what you also recognize is that when the real estate market goes haywire, it becomes much more difficult to do my job, much more difficult for the homeowner to figure out whether we're being fair with them, and much more difficult for that local government agency to figure out what can I really count on in terms of revenue. How is business inf affected by your office? Well, we also place value on all com commercial business properties, and, and so uh, that has a significant impact on them, um, you know, uh, looping back a, a little bit to the housing. If you're a landlord, um, you know, one of the major components you have in calculating everybody's rent uh, is what are my property taxes. Um, if you're a small business owner, it's the same thing of, of you know, what do I'm paying, paying there. Uh, so we have a very direct impact on business as well. You've talked about an awful lot of programs that you have. You've, 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 some things that you would have for the future. Uh, in addition to this affordable housing bill, and uh, are there is there anything else that you you wanted to talk about before we finish up with your community outreach programs? So uh, there there are a couple things that that, that I'm I'm really interested in. Um, f first, I want to continue building on 
uh, the online appeal system that we built while I was chief deputy. And ideally, I want to get it to a point where the vast majority of an appeal could be handled online, that you literally, much like you book a trip through Expedia, you'd be able to uh, look up your values, figure out whether you wanted to appeal, file your appeal, but go so far as to even find when's a hearing date that I could make and participate in that hearing online. I mean, in, in an age of video conferencing via smartphones and all that, I don't think we need to force people to have to come downtown anymore. We should be able to make that system much more convenient to the taxpayer. The other thing is, is I'm interested in figuring out how we try to make our tax system overall and how assessments work much more transparent to the taxpayer so that she or he can see exactly what does my dollar go for, how is it calculated, and is that a good deal for me? Is that something that uh, legislators and council members are wanting uh, for you to be, to know where taxes come from? Yeah, I, I, I think very much so. I, I, I think, you know, one of the concerns, uh, and, and actually we're uh, issuing the, the tax roll statements, are going to be out here in just a matter of a few days, middle of February. Mm -hmm. uh, and Executive Constantine and I are uh, providing a joint statement where, where we want to try to better explain to people what exactly does your property tax dollar get you. Yeah. All right. Now let's finish up with community outreach. Uh, I think it's fantastic that you want to have an aggressive community outreach program so that the public knows more, not only about where your taxes goes, but know, knows about benefits. Uh, what are you going to do in that? What can the public expect to receive from you or to hear from you? or from somebody else on behalf of you? Well, so we're, we're going to run, a, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a much more aggressive program on senior outreach. Uh, we're going to try to get around to all the major senior centers uh, in King County to talk to people. We're, we're looking at a variety of groups related to seniors. Um, you know, certainly like AARP, uh, a lot of the local governments have offices that handle senior um, programs and that we're going to reach out to them. Uh, churches, uh, you, you, you name it. But, but we're not going to stop there. Um, I intend to try to do walking tours of most communities around King County over the next four years and, and literally just walk, walk through business areas and talk to businesses one-on-one. -on -one. We'll be doing a series of town meetings and we've got a couple that are coming up in March with county council members to meet the public and let them ask questions and that. Um, we're also going to be much more aggressive in pushing out social media. Uh, we have a Facebook page and, and uh, a Twitter account and what we're going to try to do is create much more of a sort of online dialogue with citizens where they have some place to ask questions and that. And then we're constantly working with our customer service people in, in how do we provide them better tools so that they can get you the information you ask for quickly and accurately. Wow, fantastic. At the beginning of the show, we asked if tax relief is in sight. Well, it may very well be in sight, but you have the opportunity to look. Be sure to go to the website that we have up on the screen so that you, as a property tax owner and payer, can learn more about your rights and exercise them. John Arthur Wilson, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks, Dan. I enjoyed it.